All right. How's it going? This is Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News. All right, let's get into our first story here. In Austria, it's pronounced Fuking. And uh, there's some guys standing at the town sign of Fuking. Tourists can't resist a photo with the Austrian road sign. Austrians are not amused. From Fuking, Austria, it's safe to say that Lord Fako had no idea the village named after him would one day become a sanctuary for English-speaking sex tourists. Since Fako's death some 600 years ago, the village's name has gone through various incarnations from Fuching to Fuking until settling in its current widely popular spelling, Fuking. It is pronounced Wuking, insists the woman at the Area Information Center. Of course it is. She doesn't have any information on the village aside from a piece of a firm with mildly annoyed advice. There is nothing to do in Fuking. Turns out she was wrong, but not terribly wrong. Only three types of tourists apparently venture. Those who want to take in the alpine scenery, those who want to see Adolf Hitler's birthplace, and those who want to visit Wuking, which tend to be the same sort of people interested in climbing the nearby mountain called Wank. Of course it's called Wank. Son, according to Fuking Travel Tips on the website, the number one thing to do in Fuking is seeing the road sign. I guess there really is nothing to do in Fuking. But the lack of excitement hasn't stopped hordes of primarily young British tourists from making a pilgrimage to pay their respects. Summertime is the prime season for sex tourists. I, I don't get, what do you mean sex tourists? It, okay, there's a thing, sex tourists. Um, they lo lose their sensibilities by taking pictures of themselves in front of the fucking road sign, often in various degrees of nudity, or even during sexual intercourse, otherwise known as fucking. The worst offenders steal the road sign as a souvenir. What a shocker. At $500 a piece, you know, that's a lot of money for these fucking people. According to the fucking mayor, Franz Mendel, the village had made road signs more theft resistant by fitting them in concrete. What a brilliant mayor. No wonder he's the fucking mayor. To be sure, the German and Austrian countrysides are filled with town, town names that have entertained English speakers for decades. Well, what are some of them? All right. Lothar Lurch, who writes frequently about fucking for virtual tourists, recommends a road trip from Kissing, Germany, to fucking, Austria. A direct route from Kissing to Fuking takes just over two hours. <laughs> that's not the direct route, that's the slow route. A suggested scenic route includes stop in petting or tit moaning. A detour through condom, let alone wedding, takes much longer. Okay, what else we gotta about, know about Fuking Austria? We we thought that the Fuking locals are used to that, but suddenly an elderly guy stopped his car just the side of us while we took some pics. And he was wondering if they're going to steal the sign. Okay. Let's see. Wrenches, a cordless angle grinder. The village of Fuking, all three dozen houses of it, is quaint, but fiercely determined not to cater to tourists who are there because of the road sign. Well, that's. From what I just read, that's the only reason they're there. Looks like some bloke tried to sell fucking t-shirts, but the villagers told him to stop capitalizing on good old fucking. All right, let's see. It was only a matter of time until the restaurant started serving the new controversial brew called fucking hell, a type of 
Heilotter, or Hell in German. The European Patent Office first rejected the trademark, but was forced to approve it earlier this year after a German brewery claimed that Fuking Hell just means lager from the village of Fuking. So they had no choice but to let them make that Fuking lager. Sometimes I think somebody should open up a nightclub or a swingers club in Fuking. All right. I'm, I'll put the link in the description. You can, you know, read this more thoroughly if you would like to. This might be the only Fuking village in the world, he said proudly. Although many artists would kill to have his address, Lindbar hopes to leave Fuking behind one day and move to California. All right. What a story about Fuking Austria. All right, now we're going to move on to another excellent story about a smart male chastity device. device. It's vulnerable to locking by hackers, say researchers. The locking mechanism of the cellmate, I guess that's the name of the male chastity device, is controlled with a smartphone app via Bluetooth. Hong Kong, of course. A security flaw in an internet-connected male chastity device could allow hackers to remotely lock it, leaving the users trapped, researchers have warned. All right, first of all, all right. The cellmate produced by Chinese firm Huiwei is a cover that clamps on the base of the male genitals. I don't like that already. With a hardened steel ring, <laughs> it clamps on the base, okay, and does not have a physical key or a manual override. Son, what could go wrong? I'd be sure to strap that thing on. The locking mechanism is controlled with a smartphone app via Bluetooth, marketed as both an anti cheating and a submission sex play device. Maybe they should try to sell those in Fuking, but security researchers have found multiple flaws that leave it vulnerable to hacking. We discovered that remote attackers could prevent the Bluetooth lock from being opened, permanently locking the user in the device. There is no physical unlock. Who designed this thing? Oh, here, here you go. Here's how you get out of it. An angle grinder. All right. I have some construction uh, experience, and um, no one's working an angle grinder around the base of my unit. Other suitable heavy tool would re be required to cut the wearer free. Okay, what else did they find out? <laughs> it would it wouldn't take an attack an attacker more than a couple of days to exfiltrate the entire serial user database and use it for blackmail or phishing. Hmm. Gives me an idea. If I could hack these chastity devices, I could maybe make a few extra bucks by, uh, you know, letting them out. All right, anyway, I'll put that link in the description too. Let's move on to our next story, shall we? Seven ways to celebrate National Be Late for Something Day. We have all had it drilled into us from a young age that we need to be timely. We have to turn up to things at the right moment or just before, but we must never be late for anything. I don't know about that. Okay, um, right off the bat, I got to ask, what the hell are we looking at here, right here? I mean, I get it. That's a watch, and they're talking about, you know, National Be Late for Something Day, but what is all this hair right here? <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at right there. Okay, here are some seven ways to celebrate. National Be Late for Something Day. Post the late birthday card. Get up late. 
go against your to-do list. So if you have a to-do list, don't do it, I guess. Have a late lunch or dinner. Take a late shower. Show up late. If you're meant to be at someone's house at a certain time for a coffee or dinner, be fashionably late. Of course, this all depends on who's expecting you. If the host is laid back, you can probably get away with showing up and up with an apology. However, if the person you're visiting values promptness, maybe give them a heads up first. Well, wait a minute. We're celebrating do something to be late day, and you're going to tell the guy you're going to be late? No. Nah. Answer an email message or text late. Okay, that was one completely useless story, which, quite frankly, fits right in with the aimless news. So that's going to do it for today's episode of the aimless news. So now what I'd like you to do, if you want to, is like and subscribe. But the best way to help this channel is to share this video far and wide. Because remember, the aimless news must be told. <laughs>